Welcome to day 17 of our study through the Bible here in Community on YouTube series. And we are going to be going through Genesis 13 today. If you'd like to jump back to day one, then you can do so in the cards or the description down below. Just hop onto our YouTube channel and it'll be right there staring you in the face. Day one of our study through the Bible here in community here on YouTube. And uh, you can also find the playlist study through the Bible and it'll take you there as well. And so, if it, this is people of the free gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion, and we're so glad you joined us. And if you're new here to the channel, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any future content through this series, Studying Through the Bible. So let's go ahead and jump in. Day 17, read Genesis 13. Mark every reference to Abram, Lot, and Sodom. Know what God says to Abram, when he says it, and Abram's response to it. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Genesis 13, 1. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him into the south. So Lot is still with him, he and uh, Sarai. And you remember God's command was, leave your family and go to the land that I'm going to show you. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. So notice also it says Abram was rich. And this is neither a, a con commendation of being rich as a believer. Like if you have faith, then God's going to give you riches and wealth nor is it a condemnation of being rich. He was rich, and he had a, a good relationship with God, and God was speaking to him. God has used for rich and poor people, and both rich and poor people can be horrible sinners. So, just wanted to throw that out there. And Lot also, which went with Abraham in flocks and herds and tents. So, God was also blessing Lot. And notice that he was blessing them in spite of the fact that Abraham and Lot were being disobedient here because Lot shouldn't have been with him at this time. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together for the substance was great so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot that there be no strife, I pray you, between me and you, and between my herdmen and my herdmen, and for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself, I pray you, from me. If you will take the left hand, then I will go to the right, or if you depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Now, we see the fruits of why God uh, told Abram, you need to do this alone, because God knows the end from the beginning. His ways are not our ways, and he knew what was coming up. And that eventually Lot and Abram would have to part ways. Now, Abram's way of dealing with it was gracious, but it was not trusting uh, because the promise that God had made it was to him, not to Lot. And so Abram had every right to say, I shouldn't have taken you along in the first place. This is getting out of hand and we need to part ways. Uh, but you need to go your way, that God is guiding me, and I need to go to the place that he will show me, just like he said. That's how we should have dealt with it. Now, God deals, God takes our mistakes, and then he corrects them, and he makes everything work to the good of those who love him, and he conforms this to his image uh, as his plan proceeds. And God definitely had a plan through Abraham that Messiah was tied to these promises. And so, uh, he took Abram's mistake and he blesses it, okay? And it says that Lot lifted up his eyes. So notice he's looking with the eyes of flesh and uh, what is appealing. He beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord like the land of Egypt and now cometh unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of the Jordan and Lot journeyed east and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Little insight, when you go to move, uh, that you shouldn't just take into consideration how beautiful it is, how uh, 
economically abundant it might be, or all the other things that might be pleasing to the flesh, you need to take into account your relationship with God. You need to take into account uh, things like, is there uh, a place for me spiritually when I go there? And uh, you need to take into account the moral climate of the place. If you're feeling called like as a missionary to go into that uh, and God is directing it, then bless you in that. But you need to be aware of your weaknesses. And Lot was only looking with the eyes of the flesh. And uh, so he gets himself into trouble down the road. A little uh, foreshadowing there for you. And the Lord said unto Abram, and that Lot, after that law was separated from him, lift up now your eyes. And look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, to thee will I give it, and to your seed forever. Now, notice what just happened. Abram says, you know, take a look, go whatever way you want, and I'll let you make a decision. So Lot makes his decision, and he goes down, and then God says, okay, now that he's gone, let's get down to business. Look every direction you want to. It's yours. It's to your descendants that I'm giving it to you. That was my intention from the beginning. Lot wasn't involved from the beginning. I'm giving it to you and your descendants. Notice that. And I will make your seed as the dust of the earth, so that it may, if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall your seed also be numbered. All rise, walk through the land, and the length of it, and the breadth of it, for I will give it to you. Then Abram removed his tent, came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. And so we see, again, the altar, and that's a very uh, important and crucial part of Abram's worship before God. When he goes to pivotal places or pivotal things happen between him and his relationship with God, he builds an altar there and he sacrifices on it. And so I want to hear what you have to say. Is there something that I missed that you uh, got an insight into? Put it in the comments down below. Is there a question that you have that I didn't answer? Put it in the comments down below. I'll be taking some of those questions and using them for the weekly Q&A at the end of the week. And if you haven't already, or here's today's or tomorrow's assignment, day 18, Genesis 14. Read Genesis 14, mark every reference to Abram, Lot, Sodom, and Gomorrah, and Melchizedek. Make a list of what you learn about each and read Hebrews 6, 19 through 7, 6. And so if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up if you like the content for today. Share this video with others in your life who want to understand the Bible but they just never have had the tools in order to do it. Put those tools in their lap, get them the answers to the questions that they have, and let's do it together here in community on YouTube. And until next time, may God richly bless you.